Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ground Game. As always, I am Adul Ali. From my man G to the middle behind the camera, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this content, to share this content. If you are not receiving your Republican Party newsletter, please go on over to cabarrus.gop. Get yourself registered so you can stay in the know as to what's happening with your Cabarrus County Republican Party. As always, we are at headquarters, which is at 96 McGill Avenue here in Concord. We've got your Trump signs. We've got your political gear. We've got your Cabarrus County Republican t-shirts that you can get for a small suggested contribution, of course. And today on Ground Game, we are gonna be joined by one of your Cabarrus County commissioners, Mr. Steve Morris is gonna be with us. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get you your calendar so you know what's happening here in Cabarrus County. Here is your Cabarrus County calendar coming up on September 28th at 6 p.m. Your Kannapolis City Council will meet at 6 p.m. Then we're gonna jump on over into the month of October. On Monday, October the 12th, it's gonna be a busy day in Cabarrus County with your Kannapolis City Council, your Mount Pleasant Town Council, and your Harrisburg Town Council, as well as your Cabarrus County Board of Education, all meeting at 6 p.m. And then on Tuesday the 13th at 6 p.m., your Midland Town Council will meet. This is your Cabarrus County Calendar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ground Game. As always, I'm Adul Ali. Today, we have a very special guest with us. Many of you may know who this young man is, some of you don't, but if you don't know, this is Steve Morris, who currently serves on your Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners. Welcome to Ground Game, Brother Steve Morris. Pleasure to be here. Glad to have you. Look, a lot going on in Cabarrus County, a lot of good stuff. Uh, I yes, think sir. we've got some challenges like everywhere else in the state right now because of COVID, COVID, COVID. Uh, but we wanted to talk to you today about a few important things. Number one, a lot of growth happening here. A lot of companies moving to Cabarrus County. Um, how do you feel about the growth that's going on here in Cabarrus and the things that we're seeing happen in spite of uh, what's happening? Well, the growth that we're experiencing in Cabarrus County has been extremely positive for the most part. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, you, when you talk to people around the region and when I meet folks that are new to Cabarrus County, one question I always ask is, why, why did you decide to move here? Uh, many times that, that answer is because of the quality of your school systems and because of the availability of jobs. So we work really hard to make sure that we do have good quality schools and that we do have jobs for our citizens. Uh, when we do that, we're encouraging more growth. And with growth comes, comes additional uh, issues that we have to deal with. Certainly our school capacity, our, our traffic issues, our uh, housing situations, those kinds of things. So all of that goes hand in hand. The thing that I tell people most frequently is if you look at all the counties in North Carolina, out of 100 counties, we've got about 20 of those counties that are growing and prospering. You've got about 80 of those counties that are either stagnant or losing population. So where we're having to build new schools to get additional capacity, there are counties not very far from us that are having to close schools wow. because they don't have enough students. So if given the choice, I would rather deal with the issues of growth than to deal with the issues of a shrinking population. Absolutely. So we're very fortunate. So growth being, you know, and that's, that's, I think an amazing part of what we're dealing with here, our proximity to Charlotte, our being in that 85 corridor, uh, shout out to Concord Mills. If you happen to be through the area, go spend some of your money at Concord Mills. But one of the things that you mentioned this in talking about schools, uh, some people may be confused at the role between the county commissioners and the school board. And if I have this correct, the school board is really responsible for operations and policy and you guys are really responsible for more of the funding aspect of it and budgeting kind of thing. Is that a right way to look at it for the folks that, that may not that be sure? Is, that, is, that is absolutely correct. The county uh, is responsible for facilities for the schools. We build the buildings and pay for them. We cover the maintenance costs, et cetera. Uh, and typically that is the traditional role of counties and schools. Uh, nowadays, we do a great deal more than that. 
Uh, we provide funding for locally paid positions. We provide funding for uh, technology in some instances. We, uh, we have worked really hard over the last number of years to bring the teacher supplements uh, up and to raise that percentage of teacher supplements. Those are founded funded by the county in conjunction with the school board. Right. Uh, but it is very important, I think, for, for everybody to remember those school board members are elected officials just the same as me. Correct. So they we work for the same bosses. Uh, the same people elect us, exactly. So uh, it's important for us to respect those boundaries. Uh, and, and I'm really proud of the very collaborative spirit that we have between our board of commissioners and the school board. That's not true in every county and in every circumstance, but we have uh, been blessed here to have very good relationships. Now, I live in Kannapolis. I know you've got ties, some strong ties to Kannapolis. I know you're a small business owner. Right. Um, so you know firsthand what a lot of us as business owners and a lot of the folks who watch this as business owners are going through. Um, how do you see the rebound, you know, providing we get this uh, virus under control and Governor Cooper allows us to open back up in any capacity here going forward? Uh, how do you see the recovery going for small businesses in the area? Well, I think once we get past the, the COVID situation, I think uh, we are uniquely situated in the state to be extremely successful, certainly in Kannapolis. Uh, with uh, uh, If you have visited Kannapolis on the weekend recently mm -hmm. and seen the number of people walking on the streets, taking advantage of the, of the baseball stadium um, uh, and doing it in a safe, safe way, uh, you see a lot of people wearing masks, you see a lot of people distancing, uh, but that, that's during a shutdown period. You can only imagine what it would be when things are back to normal operation. I just left uh, Kannapolis, actually, at the, the um, Kinetic Club at the baseball stadium before I came here uh, for a kickoff for the Cabarrus Innovation Center that will be located in downtown Concord. Uh, it's a tremendous asset that it's going to benefit uh, our small businesses, our entrepreneurs, uh, they have a lot of resources that, that, to help new businesses uh, that will also be very beneficial to our existing industry. Right on. <clears throat> For many years, we've had a lot of folks that have talked about our, we've been extremely successful uh, in economic development in Cabarrus County. Since I took office in 2012, uh, we have increased our tax base by over $800 million uh, with new companies that have located here. We've created through those company locations uh, in excess of 4,000 new jobs uh, in the community. And our small businesses often say, well, what about me? Uh, my answer to that is, as a small business owner, every time we provide a job and prosperity for a Cabarrus County resident, that's one of my customers. Uh, that means they're gonna have money to buy my goods and services and come to my business. Right. So that's a huge advantage, but this offers even more. Uh, a lot of expertise, it is an extremely collaborative effort. Uh, we have representatives from the Small Business Center, from the Community College, the Economic Development Corporation, uh, our municipalities. Um, there, there's it's probably 30 different organizations that are involved in this effort. There will be co-working space. Uh, they have opportunities for, for grants and access to capital. Uh, so for entrepreneurs, this is a great, uh, a, another great reason to want to be in Cabarrus County. So I think that all those things are going to help us in, in our recovery from the, the pandemic that we're currently involved in. Gotcha. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Ground Game. We got Steve Morris with us. Rental houses in Louisiana, trailer parks in Florida and Tennessee. We moved seven times before I was 16, living paycheck to paycheck. I grew up with strong parents and humble people and humble places, and I take a little humility to the U.S. Senate, where it's in short supply. I'm Tom Tillis. My job is fighting for your job. 
We will build this economy back, and I'll remember who needs it the most. I'm Tom Tillis. I approve this message. And welcome back to Ground Game, ladies and gentlemen. We are again joined by Steve Morris, one of your Cabarrus County uh, commissioners, hard at work for us. I, I know I speak for a lot of the folks that we appreciate all the hard work. Um, on the tail end of this, I wanted to ask you how important you think it is as a county commissioner uh, to be able to work with the different municipalities, because obviously Mount Pleasant and Kannapolis aren't quite the same as Harrisburg and Concord aren't quite the same. So um, how important has that collaborative effort been for you and uh, in this whole process of going through COVID and seeing the growth that we're having? Well, it's been extremely important. And this is something that 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 all of us, our municipalities and the county as well, have worked very hard on um, over the past uh, recent years. Uh, we have our quarterly summit meetings where the county uh, meets for a dinner meeting with all the elected officials from all the municipalities. <clears throat> that gives us an opportunity uh, to, to get on the same page, to catch up on what's going on in each of the municipalities. It also has created uh, much better relationships, not only between the county and the municipalities, but it gives an opportunity for them to get together as well. Mm. You know, what we found when we started that is the elected officials in Harrisburg may have never met the elected officials in Kannapolis. Now they, they sit down to dinner together. They're able to compare, uh, compare notes, talk about issues, you know, what is unique to one from the other. And so we all benefit from that. And then when we're, when we get involved in a situation like this, uh, virus that, that we're dealing with right now, all those people already know one another. And so we, we have had um, regular uh, conference calls, Zoom calls uh, with our representatives from the Health Alliance every week uh, since the beginning of March uh, to, to talk about where we are in that process and issues that, that, that are important and to look at the statistics and see how we're doing. And so it really pays off when those relationships were already formed. Gotcha. Uh, and so, so there's great benefit to that. So y'all heard it here first. Mm -hmm. This is Cabarrus County is a very collaborative area. We, I know I can speak. I love visiting, you know, all of our municipalities. So the, the one thing on people's mind, I know that was kind of an issue. And I think, you know, for me personally, you guys kind of handled it well. We had an issue where some somebody hacked or somebody got, you know, hacked out of our account um, from, the, from the county level. Since that occurrence has happened, and I know you guys jumped on it immediately. You know, your people are going to say what people say, uh, but I know you guys jumped on it immediately. What do you think was the takeaway for you guys as a county commissioner and having that hit? Because it happens to people every day. Right. Um, what was your takeaway from that? You know, judge people, judge whatever. But I think you guys handled it abruptly in the best way you possibly could. But right. as a county commissioner, what was the takeaway from that experience of having that happen? Well, I think it was the same thing that that would be the takeaway for for any governmental entity, any large corporation any educational institute uh, is that you have to be constantly vigilant uh, with, with cyber security uh, in these times that we're in right now. Um, as a result of, of that very unfortunate incident, um, we have been able to completely revamp those systems. We brought in consultants to, to, to show us how we need to change things. Uh, we are engaged with them on a regular basis that they come back and evaluate our operations and look for weaknesses. Uh, the, you know, what I said to a lot of folks at that time, the exact same thing happened to, uh, I think it was University of North Carolina at Wilmington, mm. maybe in a larger amount. I think Appalachian State University had a similar situation with a construction project there, and you can go on down the list. Right. The big difference between what we experience and what they experience is we talked about it. We issued a press release. Uh, we, we went on the news. And so hopefully by us doing that, that alerted some other folks and maybe saved them uh, from, from being involved. And, and it is 
It is far more complex than most people could possibly imagine the way some of these folks operate. I can imagine. Yeah, so one of the things I saw, a learning experience. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate, and I don't know if any of you folks at home have saw this, in the way of transparency, there's actually a live spending budget tool that Cabarrus has that you guys put into effect where you can actually see how your dollars are being spent. And I thought that was a really amazing thing. You know, not that all of us are nerdy enough to want to go look at a county budget, right? But to know that we have that level of transparency brought on by the leadership our uh, commissioners have is amazing. I know you're up for re-election, um, yes. and that's a really important thing to make sure we maintain right. leadership through this time. How can folks get a hold of you, support the campaign, uh, support what you're doing to get re-elected there? Let them know. Well, certainly they can go to my website at electstevemorris.com. Uh, and there are many opportunities there. We love to see uh, the you see you see campaign signs out on the roads, but the the campaign signs in people's yards. That personal endorsement really means a lot. Uh, so there's an opportunity to communicate with us there for that. Uh, financial resources contributions are always important. Uh, that's one thing that's kind of different about the time we're living in right now. During a normal campaign cycle, when we'd be out knocking on doors, shaking people's hands, uh, conducting meet and greets, that sort of thing, we can't do those kind of things now. So we're pretty much limited to mail communication, which costs a lot of money. Uh, but there, there are many opportunities to, to, to volunteer there and also just to get information. So I would encourage people to take a look. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Morris, one of your county uh, commissioners here in Cabarrus County, as always here on Ground Game, we want to make sure we're getting you connected to the folks that we support and that are supporting us by working hard every single day to make sure Cabarrus County runs right. I think we're going to drop one more commercial. We got one more commercial. We're going to do one more commercial. We'll be right back on the tail end of Ground Game. If I was born today, I might not have survived. How cruel do you have to be to allow a newborn infant to die? Who wouldn't protect the life of an innocent baby? Governor Cooper said situations like mine just don't exist. He put politics ahead of saving precious babies like me. Why am I telling you this? Because I exist. That baby was almost me. I was born when my mother tried to abort me. We need a governor like Dan Forrest who will protect abortion survivors like me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ground Game. On the tail end here, something important that I think, I uh, hope you guys take away from talking with Mr. Morris today, and that is that your elected officials, your Republican elected officials take transparency um, and they take accountability very serious. So I wanna thank uh, Commissioner Morris for stopping by to kick it with us here on Ground Game and we'll hope to have him back soon. The other thing I wanted to do on the tail end is let you know that we do have your Republican Party voter guides available here at the headquarters. If you are not sure who you need to be voting for and you're not sure who the Republican candidates are, come on down to Republican Party headquarters. Get one of these voter guides for you and your friends. We need you. Barris County Republicans to come out and vote this November 3rd. We cannot afford to stay home. We need to have great turnout. Again, these are available online on our Facebook page. You can come down here to headquarters and pick them up. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 3 to 6 p.m. Look forward to catching you on the next version of Ground Game. For my man G Mills behind the camera and your entire Republican Party Executive Committee, I'm Abdul Ali. <coughs> this is Ground Game.